Well, good morning and welcome to Lisbon. Now, this video is gonna be a little bit different because usually my videos involve me. And after four years of that, you're probably sick and tired of this ugly mug on your screen. So I figured, because I'm currently traveling around Portugal with a good friend of mine, that I'll make this video about him, not about me. I hope you enjoy it and let me know in the comments if this format is of interest because believe it or not I do have other friends as well that I can make videos with. Let me know. Yeah. yeah. So if you're gonna go from there. That's okay. And then that way. In theory you should get a tram. Coming there. All right, there's a tram coming. He's in position. Oh no, there's a fucking taxi as well. He's got it. Shit. All right, James, say hello and I did, I just called you James, didn't I? You was meant to introduce yourself. Never mind. <laughs> anyway, oh, take two. The Listen. secret's gone. The secret's gone, yeah. All right, who are you, what you do? Hello, uh, I'm James. I'm a photographer and a YouTuber, I guess. Um, and as far as photography goes, the thing that I'm most interested in is kind of blending or discovering the relationship between human-made things and, and nature. For better or worse, really. So uh, that's typically what I'm on the lookout for when I'm anywhere, including Lisbon. So we'll start with the most important question. Is sensor size everything? <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Why people buy anything other than full frame, I'll never understand. So, you know, you need big, big sensors for all good photo. <laughs> <laughs> so, so while we're a bit quiet, tell us how long have you been shooting for and why did you pick up photography in the first place? Oh, uh, so I've been taking photos, I'd say 11 or 12 years. Uh, and I first picked up a camera because my then girlfriend, now wife, Emily, uh, was doing a master's. And I kind of realized that I'd need something to uh, get myself off the sofa at the weekends because she was busy working. So photography seemed like a pretty decent option. And um, we were living in London at the time. So I just walk around all day, every day taking photos. And uh, pretty quickly, I'd say I was hooked. And here we are, yeah, 11 or 12 years later been doing this as a job now of sorts for probably seven years so um, pretty pleased with the decision to pick up a camera I'd say it's uh, quite interesting coming somewhere with someone who's never been here I mean, I've spent like seven weeks in Lisbon over the years and we're currently in Alfama I've been here loads it's for James obviously it's a first time and is just stopping at every corner that I would just typically walk past now and taking photos, which reminds me of what I was like the first time I came to Lisbon. It's quite interesting to see uh, someone in a place that you're very familiar with, but they're not just shooting everything. It's actually a really cool experience because you're seeing angles and photos that you probably would have just walked past because you've taken them for granted. So yeah, very interesting morning so far in Alfama. Let me just grab a coffee and carry on into Grassa from here. Got anything? Possibly. It's really, really nice. Nice. It's so bright here, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. What focal length are you using? Is that 40? 40, yeah, my favorite. Why is that your favorite? Uh, because I love to shoot between 35 and 50, mm. and 40 is between 35 and 50. Oh. So, uh, and also Maths. I'm shooting on a, a 60 megapixel sensor, so if I end up wanting a shot that resembles 50 mil, then cropping is by no means a problem with this. So, Very good. Yeah, I like it, and obviously, as you can see, it's nice and small. It's not the fastest lens in the world, but it's well built, and uh, I'm a big fan, as I said before, of small equipment. So, uh, 
Yeah, works well. This man travels all the way to the Arctic to photograph polar bears, and his latest acquisition to his photography collection, I can turn this camera and look like a granddad, uh, the two pipes over there, um, they all look quite good next to a polar bear. What are they doing there though? Like, massive brown historical building. Did you get anything? I think against a blank wall, against this, it'll look really cool. Very, very busy background. There. I don't know of any fans. Mm. So over the last bunch of years that you've been shooting, what would you say is the most valuable lesson that you've learned about photography? If there's one lesson for, about photography that you've learned, what oh, would it be? Um, I know it's a hard question, but there's a few. Simplicity is king, I would say. When I first started out, you kind of think to yourself, right, I want to make impactful photos. And you kind of think to do that, you need to include lots and lots of interesting stuff. But the reality is I found that that just muddies the waters as far as what the viewer is supposed to be looking at. and. I think less is more an awful lot with photography and so working out how it is you can get rid of distractions once you've found your subject I think has been the biggest thing for me and uh, I'd say a lot of the time I used to sort of not be sure what to make of people saying oh that image looks kind of a bit simple uh, whereas now if someone was to say that to me I'd just take it as the biggest compliment because it's really, really difficult to make a scene make sense when all you've got is a still photo as your canvas. So, yeah, I'd say simplicity is the thing to strive for. All right, let's do the next question. And that is, okay. at what point did you feel that you're really making progress with photography? Did anything in particular happen? Was it a trip? Was it a set of photos? Was it like a, a light bulb aha moment? Oh. Or was there or anything where you thought, okay, now I'm starting to understand this better and I'm making progress with my work? I, I think it was what I said at the top about my interest being the relationship between human-made stuff and nature. Um, when I discovered that that was what I really wanted to point the camera at, everything became so much clearer. Um, and I think it's because when you start out with a camera or in any pursuit really, if you don't know the direction you want to go in, then all directions are a possibility. And that's a nightmare because you just don't know where to direct your your attention. So as soon as you have a direction and something that interests you, it means you can just discard everything else. So um, I think that was the point at which I could really start to hone in on the kinds of photos that I wanted to take, uh, which was probably only three or four years ago. So bear in mind, I'd been making a living from taking photos for years by this point. Hmm. But uh, yeah, that Interesting. was that was real. I can't exactly remember when it was or whether there was a particular photo or trip that kind of flicked the switch but it was definitely a um a big turning point for me So what advice would you give to someone who's starting photography today and they want just one piece of advice to just get them going? Hmm. Um, I, outside of the normal stuff like focusing on light and composition, I would say look for scenes that provide more questions than answers. Probably. Okay. Uh, I think that's something your photos do really well. Um, but I think we, we've kind of moved past this stage of uh, like 
I guess what people call Instagram bangers where you're stood in front of a honeypot location view and you've got an amazing pretty scene but there's nothing kind of held back from the viewer and as a consequence for me at least I find that uh, I don't keep returning to those photos whereas photos that don't provide all the answers you know I'm talking silhouettes uh, scenes where things are hidden anything that kind of prods at your curiosity I find they're the shots that that have an impact on people so it's not the easiest thing to do but finding places that yeah provide more questions than answers I have found to be a, a useful thing to think about when shooting Got something? Yeah, so maybe. next question is, if you were to start photography today, knowing what you know from your experience, what would you do differently now compared to maybe what you did when you actually started? Ooh, ah. uh, that's a good question. I think, I think when I started taking photos, I think I spent a lot of time looking for inspiration and thinking about the kinds of photos that I liked and I wanted to replicate. But I didn't necessarily spend a lot of time thinking about why it was that I liked those photos. And so I'd find loads of photos that I love to look at, but if somebody had asked me what it is that I liked about them, I couldn't fancy it. And I think it's, it's that, working out what it is that you like and why, that was the, I think magic bullet is probably a strong term, but that was a, a real help to me when I could pinpoint what it was in particular photos that I liked, because then you can look for and replicate specific things, and that A, helps to kind of get the photos that you want, but B, helps you to understand why it is that you want those photos in the first place. So, And also it means that you're not producing work that's just an exact copy of other people's stuff, because you're taking bits from everywhere then, rather than copying entire concepts and scenes so yeah I think that's what I'd say for that one all right and on to the final question which is where do you see photography going over the next 10 years in your opinion I think photography is in um, watch out can you run over I think photography is in a really good place um, when you think like 10 years ago maybe a bit longer 15 years ago people thought that the camera market was dead and the reality is it's so far from that it's had a real resurgence um, so people are buying cameras and also on top of that I think so many people have been worried about AI but there has been a real pushback on AI uh, and I think part of the reason that people now love film cameras in many cases and part of the reason that people are pushing manufacturers to uh, make cameras who are capable of authenticating your work I think shows that people still value the process and ultimately photos just like paintings just like music are only valuable because people know that people have made them and uh, so that being the case I think photography will go from strength to strength which I didn't think and I don't think most people thought was the case a decade ago so yeah, I think photography is in a good spot. All right, and that's all for this video. Let me know in the comments what you think of this format. Uh, I've never done anything like this before, and if this works, if this is something that you like, then I'll do it with a few other people that you might or might not know uh, over the coming weeks and months. So thank you again. Make sure to check James out. Uh, I'll link all his stuff down below show support really good photographer and um, that's it not much else to say it's been emotional and I'll see you in a bit